Aerojet's out and Dark Speed's in. So what's new in Cobra's 2024 driver range? Let's go find out. Before we even talk about driver tech, can we just talk about how much of an upgrade we've had in the head cover game here? This is screaming like race car vibes, which was the theme last year. Now this one's just so much sleeker, and that comes down to the theme of the driver decor too, which I will get to. But the inspiration this year in terms of visuals was actually a Range Rover Khan, which I didn't know anything about. Apparently it's a thing, but it looks freaking good. I can tell you that. I mean, take a look at this. How good does that matte black finish look? It sits so good behind the golf ball. And it's really better for photography, I'm not gonna lie. You can't see my reflection when I'm trying to show you it. But I just think it looks so clean. Even the Cobra logo is like blended into it. And this LS with like that small compact shaping. It just, it could take the march for the best looking driver this year, I think. Now, the big story this year is shaping. So not only do we have that Range Rover theme, we also have a Ferrari theme in terms of shaping. So loads of aerodynamics have gone into this. The most prominent of that is in this LS model. So we have kind of a higher crown, a deeper face, but then it's more shallower at the ends. And you can see it's much more rounded here. And that's to help reduce drag, which is hopefully going to give us more clubbed speed. We'll see if the effects of that happen soon. Now this design is used throughout the range. We've got three models which are slightly different to what we've seen before. So this is the LS that's kind of staying in the line as a model. In the middle we've got the X which is designed to be like that mid-launch, mid-spin model. And then at the end of the range we've got the Max which is designed to be a Max Forgiveness, Max Spin, Max High and actually Max Draw Bias as well. Now with all of these we see aerodynamic changes but obviously as you move through into kind of the Max model the club head is getting bigger so the changes aren't as obvious as you see in the LS. But I think actually if we pull out the X model, which is kind of the equivalent to last year's straight up Aerojet, you could definitely see the difference in shaping. It's probably more prominent in terms of the top line. There's a lot more curvature to this year's shape than there was last year. And that's gonna whole help with that drag and that movement of the club through the air. Now, first things first, I just wanna go through all three models and show you the differences, what it does in terms of ball flight changes, spin, carry distance, which model might suit you. And then at the end, I think we're gonna go back and kind of compare that X to last year's Aerojet and see what the differences are. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna hit the LS because I just love the way it looks, to be honest. And it probably has the best shaft spec in it. I'll probably hit these with all of them, to be honest. This is 60 gram stiff. I always find it quite interesting with low spin models because I don't always necessarily low spin them. <laughs> I think sometimes when you hear low spin, you think it's gonna come out like a thousand. It's not quite how it always works. Now, I really like the fact over the ball, visually, this is quite a deep club head. I think it contrasts with the smaller shape really nicely and gives it like that player's look. You can definitely see it's gonna be more workable from that. Probably if you catch it off centre, not as forgiving. Now this is in theory their lowest launching head. They have sent me this in a nine, but the others are 10.5. So I've lofted it up just to try and sh to my show some sort of kind of gradient through the different models. Now I have already hit this indoor in a simulator because it's freezing in England and I'm not hitting everything out here in these conditions and thinking it's accurate data all the time. I was getting between 220 and 230 carry, which is pretty good for me given this is just an off the rack model. See, that was a really nice ball flight for me, and I wouldn't say it was kind of excessively low or high, it was just kind of in that middle trajectory. And I would probably say overall with this model, I haven't seen that it's super low spin. Obviously I have lofted it up, so that's gonna give me more spin than if I used it in that static nine model. But kind of on average, I was looking at that mid 2500s, which actually for me, I think is really playable and is kind of where I would want my spin to be, so. Still an option for a gamer, <laughs> based on the outline numbers we've got so far. My best was like 230 carry, which I'd be really pleased with. My spin was in that mid 2000s, and the height on average was like 75 feet. That's probably a little bit lower actually than what I'm seeing out on the course here today. Visually, it looks like it's flying a bit higher than that at the moment, which is probably what I prefer. 73 is probably a tad on the low side. Although, you know, in the wind I'd quite like it. Now, there is definitely quite a big jump up in shaping from the LS into the X, which is that middle model. It's a lot more elongated at the back, you see a lot longer shaping, and because of that it doesn't look as deep. What I do actually like is I feel like you can see a bit more of the face, and actually there's slightly different patterns on the front. So this has a circle kind of in that middle centre section, and actually I quite like that for a visual align point thing, because obviously we've got no, like, 
bright white marking on the top anymore. We don't have anything in the center line, so it's quite nice to actually frame the golf ball with. Hopefully you can see straight up <laughs> how much higher that launched. And it just, it felt easier to hit, I'm not going to lie. And that was kind of the consistent thing of what I've seen in my data so far. Now, I wouldn't say the dispersions were necessarily massively different between the LS and the X, but what I noticed is I had a much more consistent ball flight in terms of that trajectory, which is obviously pretty important in terms of how the ball's gonna come out consistently. If you're fighting wind and things, different land angles, different bounces, it's gonna be very different if one's going here, 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 in different orders. Now, on average, this was also flying just over 10 feet higher, so if you're someone who does need a little bit extra launch, you can definitely see that as you move up to this model. It's also quite easy to see that I can basically start hitting a nice little draw with this where with the LS I'm kind of fighting a fade. The LS is set up for kind of neutral to fade bias because typically that's what tall players want to see and that's the model they will typically move into. Whereas you're going to see more of that kind of right to left bias as we move up the range. See, I call that a bit thin and it's still basically got the same peak height. I can feel it's not traveled quite as far, but in terms of like consistency of ball fly, it's really good. Now, I know my ego's like, use the LS, but it's just so much easier to hit, especially out here on the course. Now, I would say over the ball visually, this is a much smaller jump in terms of size. And yes, the X is a little bigger. It looks a little shallow, especially at the back because it's elongated out. But actually, it's definitely a smaller jump than we saw from the LS to the X. I do quite like the fact they're basically all decorated exactly the same. They've just got like slightly different colour notings on the bottom. So it's really easy to like figure out the different models, but without it kind of looking visually different in the bag or over the ball. Right, this is max forgiveness, max height, max draw biased. Hopefully, all in the middle of the fairway. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> That was such a big high draw. I mean, it does what it says on the tin. Sure. Don't buy it if you've got a hook, <laughs> would be my advice. But if you slice it and you want to straighten it out, just get in the bag. That went so much higher. It's weird because I've only hit it in a sim. So obviously I saw the numbers, but I couldn't visually see how high it was going. Nice. I swapped models. I started gaming the LS and now I'm in the max. Just easy straight distance. Now, in all seriousness, when we look at the numbers, this was flying 30 feet higher than the LS in the launch monitor. So we've gone from 73.8 feet to over 105 feet. So if you're someone who struggles with a ball fly, if you get a bit trappy down with your attack angle, this is going to really help you out. Because obviously if you're getting more launch, you're going to get more carry distance because you're going to have more hang time. That's something a lot of people struggle with. This is only the 10.5 as well. Like You could knock this up to the 12 and you'd be like a moon ball in it. Now, I think what's interesting with both this and the X is I still got them up to my best shot being a carry of 229 yards. So they're actually not far away from the LS at all. And actually, sometimes I think the distance with these was more consistent. So I call it the fact you're not chasing like one model just for speed, but you do have three really clear models that are doing different things. You've definitely got very different trajectories. So you can kind of pick based off that. The spin in this was a lot higher. It was up near the 3000s. Now, obviously that some of that could come into shaft, but actually probably most people would do with a little bit more spin to kind of keep the ball in line. I think there's actually a lot of people who've created this kind of mindset that spin is the enemy. There was like a thought process at one time that lower spin was going to give us loads more distance. And in some cases that's true, but not necessarily all the time because actually it <laughs> often means you're going to get those dippy flights and you're not hitting as many fairways. So I would urge you to kind of look at into custom fitting and actually get a spin that matches like your speed, your launch characteristics, your attack angle, because actually sometimes having more spin is going to make you a lot more consistent driver of the golf ball and could give you more distance as well as in it straight. I mean, I was actually looking at some optimizer data for driver earlier. And if I had like a zero attack angles are pretty flat and my ball speed, which is in the 140s mile per hour, if I'm launching at like 13 degrees, it's recommended I'm in the high 2000s to 3000s of spin. So don't always get scared by that spin. Right, as if by magic, a trap man's just appeared. 
So what we're going to do is put the X up against last year's Aerojet. And really, I just want to look at that aerodynamic story and see if my club head's moving any faster. It's really embarrassing when I'm swinging at like 90 mile an hour because I've got like 10 layers on. I'll just Photoshop it and add a bit on. Right, first up, the X. The big reveal, 92.8. See, that's saying spin 2.9 optimal. It's only 2.15 carry. <laughs> oh, I ripped that. 96.4, hello. Nine four point seven. Bro, I was really throwing the speed around there, wasn't I? Right. Let's do a swapsies. Aerojet's in. What will happen? <laughs> do a fast practice swing. I feel like I want to be biased towards one club. We've got to try and swing it the same somehow. I mean, I definitely sliced it more. 91.9. There might be something in this, everyone. Although my first one last time was a bit slow. Oh, quite a bit of a difference in the optimizer there, wasn't there? Launched a bit higher, spun a lot more. I did leave the face massively open. Actually, I didn't. It was still a degree shut, but it felt open. Now you're 1.8. I felt like I was faster. No, I was trying to be faster. And I was like, I can't. They can't all be slow. Oh, well, certainly a lot straighter with it, though. 92.1. Ooh. It turns out when they do tech, it is actually there. So I've gone from an average of 91.9 with the Aerojet to an average of 94.6 with the dark speed, which is pretty interesting to say that's not the most aerodynamic model. Like, what would we gain with the LS? And I did have one in there that was down at 92.8, so pretty impressive. Turns out new shaping does actually help you. I was definitely a lot more consistent as well. Interesting to see how the spin was like. Down 600, I mean, 3.4, nearly 3.5 would definitely be a little bit excessive for me with this. Pretty impressive differences. So first impressions of the dark speed range. I'm pretty impressed, you know. I like the fact there's kind of three clear differences between the different drivers. To be honest, I'm favouring those kind of higher spin more forgiving models because they just felt super consistent to me, especially now getting out on the golf course and seeing how much easier they were to hit compared to the LS. I think we've got some really good options here. They've been really trending with their driver game recently and these could be really popular this year. Add to the fact they look incredible, it's just a big win, hopefully. We'll go get custom fit, get really dialed in for the right model, and then come back to you and let you know if it's going to contend in my bag this year. Right, I'm off to warm up. I mean, funny, but that second one on my speed test, I nearly lobbed it in the hole.